a kinder music teacher and a private lesson teacher at Kathy's Music. And I'm here to talk to you today a little bit about one instrument that I teach in private lessons, and that is the viola. This is my viola right here. It is a string instrument because it makes sound using its four strings. Some other string instruments that you might know related to the viola would be the guitar or the ukulele, maybe the dulcimer. Um, and the viola is oftentimes seen as kind of like a big brother, big sister instrument to the violin. So I thought I'd pull my violin up too, just to compare them. You can see my viola is quite a bit bigger. It's taller than my violin. And it's a little bit thicker too, just a touch. And because it's a little bigger, it also makes a sound that's a little bit lower. So let's talk about that as we compare the strings of these two. It has some strings in common um, and some that are not. My highest viola string is A. It's named for this, the pitch that it produces. Now the violin has that same A string, but it's the second highest one. Violin has one higher string called E and then A whereas viola starts up here on A, and they both have a D string. There we go. There's my D string on the violin, and viola, it has a G string. Now that's as low as the violin goes, but the viola has one lower string named C, all the way down there. So the viola and the cello actually have strings with all the same names. The cello is just even bigger and even deeper sounding. It's, it's a much lower sound on those four pitches. So I can make sound on my viola by either plucking the strings like I just did. And in fact, if I put it up on my shoulder, which is where I normally play it, I can use my left hand over here to change the notes and get a little more variety out of those open strings. So let me try uh, plucking a song or using pizzicato rather on a song that you might know. old squirrel if you're in kinder music right now. I can also of course use my bow to make sound. Now the bow has one portion that's just a big long wooden stick right back here and then on the other side we have some horse hair I'm out of the tail of a horse those white strands and that's what I pull across my strings to make a sound. I'll show you right now. to sleepy also. As far as other parts of the viola that are important to know about, we have those four strings, of course. Then right down here, holding up the strings is the bridge. The bridge helps keep those strings at just the right amount of tension so that we can play on them. On the other side, each of those strings is attached to its own tuning peg. So we have four of these as well. I can either tighten the tuning peg to bring the pitch up just a little bit, or I can loosen it to lower the pitch. Or I could use the fine tuners. Now my viola just has one fine tuner on my A string, um, but you can find lots of violas that have four where each string gets its own. I can turn that tuner left or right again to tighten or lower, to tighten or loosen the string. Let's see what else. We have the fingerboard. So that spot where I dropped my fingers to change the pitch, this entire long black piece is our fingerboard. We have the scroll up at the very top. That's kind of where the tuning, tuning pegs live, right underneath the scroll. Underneath the scroll, we have the neck that attaches it to the body of the instrument. And I also have the chin rest down below. That's where I hold on with my chin, between my chin and my shoulder. You can also use a shoulder rest if you like to make it a little bit more comfortable. Now, as far as where you can go to hear um, a viola being performed, the orchestra is a great place to start, either the Pittsburgh Symphony downtown or maybe your local high school, middle school, elementary school probably has their own strings program where you can hear some violas. Uh, you'll usually see them in the front 
section of an orchestra, maybe between where the violins and the cello sit. Uh, they tend to blend in quite a bit with the violins, but if you look closely, you can see probably around six or eight or 10 violas in their own section. Again, we're looking out for those instruments that are just a little bit bigger than the violin. Um, and in the past, throughout history, the violin has kind of been the, uh, the shining star solo instrument. But more recently, within the past 70 or 80 years, I would say a lot of really beautiful and diverse and amazing viola repertoire, solo viola repertoire has been written as well. Um, so there are lots of concertos and sonatas and um, really nice pieces written for solo viola too. So you might see them standing in front of the orchestra every now and then. It's also really common to see violas within chamber music. So if you're listening to a string quartet, or a quintet, maybe a piano trio. Pretty much all of those will have a viola hiding in there as well. Um, not quite as frequently do we hear violas in country or bluegrass or um, fiddle type music, but it's not impossible. I've, I've certainly heard that before um, as well. So before we go today, I wanted to play you one more sample of a piece that some of my students are working on that I've played in the past. Um, it is from a cello suite, originally written for the cello, written by um, Johann Sebastian Bach, but it's very frequently performed on the viola too. So this is from his suite number three in C major. This is the beret, or an excerpt from the beret. <laughs> recording of that piece to hear the ending of it. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. I really enjoyed sharing with you all about the viola. I hope you learned something new and I hope to see you very soon. Mm -hmm.